So welcome to another Stromzy community call. Uh, this one is on 4th November. And uh, we start with the usual open forum point for questions and issues, if anyone has anything. But I guess as in most cases, nobody has anything. Okay, so maybe we can move to the next point. So uh, that's the open PRs and issues. Uh, the first one is just uh, informative. So I try to create a new page on the website, which is called join us and describes in a bit more detail how users can join the community, how they can contribute and so on. Uh, and it's full of links to all the different uh, documents, channels, blog posts, GitHubs, and so on. So uh, yeah, there's just new song really just uh, sharing that with everyone. Uh, if you can have a look at it, uh, if you haven't yet, that would be great. The next two are about bridge. <clears throat> So there seem to be these two issues open for some time. Uh, I think Standa is not here, but Paolo, maybe you have some idea. Should we merge this one? Yeah, I was reading this one. Uh, I was fine with the latest change with Stanislav. So I was waiting for him if uh, yes to do some more work or uh, we can just merge it. So let's say that I will ping Stanislav and uh, if he's okay to, to merge this one. And uh, yeah, we can move forward. So let's ping him here right now. Yeah, much better, yeah. The next one is also bridge. Uh, this time, something about some open API factory. The tests uh, seem to be failing, but it's not touched for quite a long time, so. Yeah, I, I didn't know about this. Uh, it's a still in draft as well. Uh, maybe I guess that, yeah, he's doing some uh, removing the open API factory, which is deprecated. Let's ping him again, even on this. Okay, next one is in Kafka and that's the docs PR about the changes around the JVM memory recommendation. Tom, I think I edited it here because uh, I guess it would be good if you can review it. Yeah, I think I've already reviewed it once, but I'll give it another look, no problem. What's that, 5742? Yeah. Next one is uh, this thing about the replicas and uh, partitions and configuration in the Kafka topic status. I from some of the discussions, I didn't really remember whether we still plan to continue with this or whether we somewhere suggested that we maybe don't want to have it in the status because the operator is updating the spec in this case uh, as well. Yeah, that was sort of where I eventually arrived at. I think it would be odd to be updating both the spec and the status with essentially the same info. So should, we, info. so should we just close it? Uh, I think so. Um, the, the, this came from the last community meeting. We had quite a long discussion about the uh, the defaults 
um, and whether in Strimsy we should override the um, default for uh, the number of partitions and replicas of topics given that we know the size of the cluster. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, I wasn't on the, I was on PTO when the last call was, but I think that's what was in the meeting minutes, yeah. Yeah, I raised an issue around, we were discussing about having it in the status and the discussion, as far as I can remember in the community call was the kind of reasoning behind it was, well, if we're going to be changing the defaults, how does the user find out what everything is currently set to? But actually, if they can look in the spec and the spec will show them exactly what it's currently set to, then I think that's fine. I don't know if there's a documentation piece missing, whether it states anywhere that um, Strimsy will update the specification. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely documented somewhere because it's un very unusual for an operator to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy for this to be closed. So, so going back to the last discussion which you had, uh, because I wasn't part of it, did you discuss the backwards compatibility issues of setting these things by default? I don't recall that we did. So I'm little bit concerned if we out of the blue basically change the yeah default replication meaning sync replica values to something other than it was set long time before so yeah no, that's a good point you're right i think what might have happened in the last community call, if I remember correctly, was that we had some discussion about the impact of it, but um, didn't really come to any conclusion and thought it would be discussed again. So I, I think it's fair to keep discussing it. Um, I think it's a tricky one because I think the general consensus was that if the, the new proposed changes would make sense, but it was just a question of the trade-off of then changing something that's been like that for a while. Yeah, I think it's a bit tricky one. It's a bit similar to the, the X mode change in the Kafka clients and the consumers from, what was it, one to all or something like that in the Kafka 3.0. It kind of makes sense but it seems to leave a lot of users completely confused and fucked up uh, because suddenly their performance is screwed because they didn't realize about this change. They didn't change it back. And now it's doing something different than it was doing before. And it's much slower, right? So uh, I don't think the impact here is that big, but it's a bit similar change. So. Yeah, I wonder, I guess if you are not fine to just changing it, then there might be several options maybe. We can uh, add just a warning to the release note, something like blah, blah, blah in streams is 28. This will be set by default like this. If you want to keep the current settings, then set it in the Kafka CR. Would that be enough? I guess that on the menu, that, that was the agreement, right? To be clear on the dock, or as you said, right now with the warning on release notes, 
Yeah, but I meant more, if, for example, it should be on the release notes, I don't know, for two or three releases first, and then we actually implement the change to have bigger chance that someone saws it and acts on it. But I kind of hate these things when you set up some plan and then you <laughs> have to wait Six yeah, I mean, ultimately, I wonder. Something. I wonder how much value this really adds. We've, you know, we've spent quite a long time talking about it, and um, there's this backwards compatibility aspect, which is tricky. And if you scale up the cluster, um, then potentially that ends up changing the defaults as well i guess given what we've we've sort of proposed so far um which maybe is an extra complication so maybe it's not quite as simple as we thought and you know if we're not if it's not really going to add that much value because you know most people will um if they spe you know, will specify a replication factor in a number of partitions anyway then you know is this really what we should be spending our time doing So should we do something else instead? We have these uh, warnings which kind of warn against uh, bad configurations. If they still work, I haven't checked that out for a long time. But I think IBM contributed that in the past. And it does things like warn against the uh, ephemeral storage and so on, right? Yeah, should I've certainly that... seen them working. Yeah, should we add there are some warnings that if the user doesn't explicitly configure the default replication factor and the default minincing replicas, then uh, it gives him a warning that it defaults to one and that's basically not guaranteeing any reliability. I think it's tricky to, to have that warning appear if like based on whether they've specified it because if you, if I create my custom resource and then the operator updates it and then the operator goes down and comes back up again the operator doesn't know the difference between me having originally provided it and me not providing it so i think you'd have to put the warning up if it currently has a replication factor of one regardless of whether it was set on purpose or the operator added it and then i guess the consideration is whether that would frustrate users who've done that on purpose but that's it is only... just a warning that's only when you validate it in Kafka, right? But if you validate it in the Kafka CR, in the custom resource, then you know whether it is there or it isn't there, I guess. But I think because the operator is updating the custom resource. No, and so that's with the Kafka topic resource. Oh, right. But it's not with the Kafka resource. So the, 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 right, I yes, meant it sorry. more about the, about the the default values in Kafka and they are in the Kafka CR and they are not updated by the operator. So if they are not there, the user didn't set it and they yeah. can set it explicitly to avoid the warning. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Certainly we've seen people, like the warnings are quite visible when you run it in things like OpenShift, so. I guess the only negative thing might be that if someone is totally fine running with the defaults, and just use that, then they might be slightly annoying that they now have to change it to get rid of the warning. But it is only a warning and yeah. it's probably a fair warning. Because you could, I think the warning also comes up if, for example, like you say, you don't have persistence turned on or yeah, yeah. Um, you've got a single 
broker and things like that. Tom, Paolo, what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm fine. Good morning. Yeah, I can live with that. So should we also set these fields then by default in the example resources which we have? That the single nodes examples will have it set to one, the three broker examples will have set it to three and min in single replicas to yes. two and so on? Yes. Yeah, I agree, even because a lot of people start from the examples and then they use them improving the stuff. So it's, they start with just copy pasting the, the examples. Yeah, it's not just the examples, it's the docs as well. Oh, there yes, some yeah. Examples given there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to summarize this. Okay, so like this, does that make sense? I makes sense guess. to me. Yeah, makes yeah. sense to me. Yep. Okay, great. So going back to the issues because this issue is then basically, wait, did I, Jesus, why does the Zoom setting doesn't want to disappear now? Why does this thing work so badly? So we updated this one and then the, so this one that ties up to that as well. So that's about what should be the default setting for the topics created by the Kafka streams storage and the topic operator. So originally this PR was actually configuring this automatically to ideally three replicas and two min in sync if the broker, if the cluster had at least three brokers. And uh, two, I don't know, two and one or one and one depending on the configuration, but not more by three out of the box. So should we now proceed with this one if we don't implement the, the defaults in the Kafka cluster? Or do we want to deal with it that the users create the defaults, hopefully when setting up the cluster and this is not needed? That seems to be the simplest thing to do, doesn't it? Uh, so sorry, which one? 
um, let users set the defaults when they create the cluster and then this one's not needed? So I guess the challenge is that if they set the defaults only based on the warning, then these topics will already exist and changing the defaults won't change them. So the only way how to change it afterwards would be basically to to use reassignment, right? Yeah, and then we end up in the situation of having to pick which brokers to reassign them on to. Yeah, well, I meant it more that the user has to reassign it manually. Yeah, which is horrible. So I wonder if this still makes sense. What do you think? Can you just scroll up just to remind me what the... How much scroll up? That'll do. Uh, I think we could spend an awful lot of time trying to save people from themselves for topics that already exist and aren't ideally configured. And I, you know, I think. I'd rather we put effort into things like better integrating with cruise control, because I see that that has a lot more value for people, who, for whatever reason, needing to change replication factors or whatever, than um, on a sort of piece by piece basis, trying to save people from themselves. I think what makes this different is that this isn't the user's topic, right? This is our topic. So it's not saving the users from themselves, it's saving the users from us, basically. Then I think we just put something in the release notes to say that there's this bug and there's this procedure to address it. Okay, so we should close this one as well then. Okay, nobody disagrees, I guess.
Okay, anyone has any other issue they want to discuss? If not, then uh, there are two open proposals. Uh, one is opened already for some time uh, about the custom authentication on the broker side. Uh, so everyone, please uh, have a look. I saw Paolo was commenting there. And the other one is fairly new. It's about uh, hitting some Microsoft special authentication on the client side. So my view on this one, and I commented to that extent is that I don't think we really want to have 10 different authentication mechanisms, one for Microsoft, one for Amazon, one for Google and so on. I think we really want to do this more as an extension point, which allows users to configure the custom authentications there. And they would be able to supply the configuration in that case, instead of trying to build all the separate feature for everyone. Not sure if others agree or not. I can certainly see that point of view. And I, I partly agree with it, but I also can see that there's a an alternative point of view, which if the more we provide that sort of thing, the easier we make it for people to adopt Strimzy, you know, how they want to use it. And so it's it's kind of, you know, once you've got one, then you're right, then you go from Microsoft to Amazon to Google and all the rest. And, you know, it's a lot of effort, but if we want people to adopt Strimzy, the easier we can make it then the better the adoption will achieve. And if, if they're each sufficiently constrained that we're not going to have a never ending series of issues saying, oh, can we now just sort of tweak this thing this way and that way and make it support this little feature and support our use case, then um, maybe it's worth doing, but I'm, I'd love to hear what other people think. Well, I think one challenge to keep in mind uh, is that if you adopt this into the API, you are then also responsible for testing it and maintaining it, right? They might help and might have interest to help, but at the end, if those who were interested in it stop caring, then it's still in the API and it's quite hard to get rid of it, right? So I think that's one of the challenges that you then need to have it covered in the in the tests and you need to maintain it and so on. Yeah, even because the API can change on the other side, right? Microsoft can decide to change the API and then we have to change stream the API. Then there are a lot of changes. I, I, so I will say that to be more general, Maybe it's more complex, but yeah, it's more flexible. So my point is that, yeah, I agree with you, Jakub. Let's see if... Uh, yeah, we, you scared <laughs> Microsoft people working on this or they will contribute anyway to have something more general than a specific one for Microsoft. Yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, that will be interesting to see. Uh, it surprised me a bit. that they opened it this specifically because on the issue where it was discussed or discussion where it was discussed, uh, 
I pointed out quite explicitly also the other requirements around Amazon MSK and uh, so on raised by other users. And I also pointed them to the other proposal around the custom authentication on the broker side, which is from the beginning written as something uh, fairly generic for everyone. So, but that's yeah, got they, quite a high bar because you have to roll your own images. Uh, in general, yes. But yeah, I, so the main advantage I see that it helps us to avoid all the commitments and responsibilities to testing and maintaining it. But then we're just expecting somebody else to do that. Yes, somebody. Or not, who might or not be, you, Strimzy. Somebody who might be better suited for it. Like someone who has Microsoft accounts to test it and things like that, right? So whatever is the solution that we want to, to follow here or the path that we want to follow, I would say that this is uh, really, so we should push to have it in terms that it's really important for StreamZ because, uh, so as far as I understood, it's something missing in Microsoft, right? They are trying to kind of mirroring from uh, an event apps to the other, there is a kind of luck in their technology to do that. And they saw that StreamZ is able to do that. So I guess they are using StreamZ just for, um, just for handling uh, the Kafka Mirror Maker 2 custom resource and then configuring the two event subs as a source and target and not using StreamZ for deploying Kafka. But anyway, yeah, it's a kind of win for us. So I see that. Well, I think that's, yeah, they might have one motivation, but it might work in a different ways, right? You have people moving from us to the managed services, but you have also people moving in the other direction. So yeah, even if they don't intend them to use Kafka, you might find someone who sees that as a better way to go with Streams than uh, with Azure. So yeah, I'm not sure that's necessarily a bad thing for us. Well, right now the, 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 the Mirror Maker 2 already works. Uh, doing the mirroring between Kafka and Event Apps, right? So yeah. th they are searching for a solution for mirroring Event Apps to Event Apps. So between on customers that are already using Microsoft uh, Cloud stuff. So that maybe they don't need Kafka, but anyway, they are using StreamZ, which yeah. is a, a winning point for us. Yeah, exactly. So I would say, let's wait and see the other side. Sorry, guys, I guess that the, my mic was far from my mouth. Uh, and I just realized, by the way, uh, yeah, let's wait for the, for the folks coming back to your comments and see how it goes. Um, I don't know. So I wonder if Tom sees it differently. Maybe Tom, you should comment on that proposal as well with your view. Uh, because it's just the three of us here as a maintainers. So yeah, I'm happy. Don't really I'll take a look at it. To, don't really want them to go and rewrite everything based on my comment. If then uh, not everyone sees it the same way. Yeah, I've not looked at this yet, so I can take a look and make a comment. That's no, no problem. Yeah. And then we see what they what they reply.
in any case, maybe Tom, it would be good if. Yeah, I guess if we want to do it as you suggest, then we also need to be clear that we expect them to contribute some system tests or whatever will be needed. Yeah, I mean, I think if if they're going to contribute, so on. exactly, if they're going to contribute the code, then the contribution needs to come with a level of testing that means it's not just going to be, you know, burdens, burdensome for us in the long run. So. so sorry, Tom, just to be, uh, to, to be clear, what you are suggesting is, so is having a custom kind of custom Microsoft configuration in the in the Kafka mirror maker to custom resource, right? Just for doing this stuff. Um, I need to read the proposal because I don't know quite what I'm arguing for in the context of the proposal. I'm just going off what I've sort of heard in this meeting. Um, but what I am arguing is that I think Strimzy as a whole should be open to having um, code that's specific to different, um, you know, cloud authentication, you know, or, yeah, authentications against different services, um, if that is going to help drive adoption of Strimzy. So I think, so that's actually other part of my command that given how the code is structured and the effort we put into having the client part of the authentication shared between the components, there's actually negative value of doing this just for Mirror Maker 2 probably. So even if we go the way that there is some specific authentication type, uh, uh, Microsoft IAM or whatever it's called, Microsoft Manage Identity, then I think it should still be implemented in all of the resources. We don't want to have that split again and have something support like Mirror Maker 2 support this, but yes, connect and bridge not support it and so on. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. And then I guess if it would be specific, you would just do some authentication, like you have it with OAuth, for example, you would have authentication type Microsoft, whatever. And under that, you will specify the details which it needs, and the operator will set it up. Yeah. I, I really think that testing and maintaining is challenging because you probably need Azure Event Hubs to actually test it, right? So. Yeah, how does that integrate into the system test? Can we not get an account just for CI CD purposes? Yeah, maybe they can give us some account for that. And you can have an account as well, <laughs> for sure, but I'm quite sure that they are asking for a credit card when you sign up. Okay, anyway, so I guess uh, that's for this one. So Tom will have a look at it and then comment with his view as well so that we can move the discussion there. Any other proposals we want to discuss? I'm about to create a new version of the service binding one, but I don't think it needs discussing here. I'll put it up and then people can review tomorrow or next week, whenever they have time and then probably discuss it on a future community call. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't edit it here because uh, yeah, I guess we edit once you open the updated one. Yeah. Okay, next point on the agenda is KubeCon China office hours. So Paolo is organizing it this time. So that's just to let everyone know, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just sent, so not just, but yeah, one week ago, I sent the email uh, to set up us for the office hours. So now I'm waiting for 
for hearing back from them. And then, uh, yeah, I will move preparing the usual doc as Jakub does about, yeah, some questions and, uh, and things to talk about. And yeah, this time we can talk about Canary, right? Because there is a release. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't remember, do you remember out of your head when is KubeCon China? Uh, should be in December or not. Okay. Yeah, December 9 and 10. Yeah, December 9 and 10. Yeah. Okay, so that's one month. Yeah, maybe we have some more new features <laughs> than the kind of release. Okay. Any other business? Not then I guess we are done for today. So thanks for coming and uh, see you in two weeks. Don't forget that uh, for us in Europe due to the summer and winter time, it will be super early morning, 9 a.m. Or I guess even 8 a.m. for UK. No long sleep.